Hi friends, welcome to part three of class two. This is the final part of class two besides the exercise videos. So thanks for making it through. Now today we are covering Pythagorean stretches um, and just talking a little bit about off grid um, and you know, not 45 degree angle type structures and just what to think about them. Now this structure uh, specifically right here was about the largest I could get with the grid size we were planning on using. So um, there's obviously a lot more out there that exist, um, but hopefully after I kind of explain it, you'll understand. And later on, as we move to larger grids, we'll be able to cover some of those, but they're relatively the same. All right, so um, kind of what I mean by that is we can see we're once again using Jacob's Scutigera uh, crease pattern. Things like this right here, these are all not on that 45 degree angle. They're a little bit off, but it's nothing too complicated. Um, and it's very similar to everything we've done uh, so far. All right, let's get into it. All right, so now with this kind of structure, I always find the hardest Thing about them to be the pre-creasing just because they're not really along our grid well they are but it's not 45 degree angles so it makes it a little bit trickier on where to track and where to crease especially for these kind of units um, so I'm going to cover the pre-creasing a little bit but before that I'm just going to talk about kind of the direction on how to collapse these and just you know what they become. Now you can kind of see it with this collapsed example, but it could be a little hard to tell just from the crease pattern that uh, where does the collapse come in? And when I first was doing these, I was confused. I thought it was like some weird um, structure, kind of like a bird base that would all just collapse towards the center. When in reality, it's more like two triangles, two sides like this um, that just sink fold in. So I'll show that more when I collapse, but it really makes it pretty simple, um, at least for these ones. Um, these ones will be a little bit more difficult, but you can pretty much see like this would be part of one and it, it did to follow suit pretty easily. Um, nothing too different from an Elias stretch collapse once you actually pre-crease it. But yeah, let's get into the pre-creasing. I'm gonna fold the grid really quick. Um, go ahead, print out yourself one of these and we'll get started. All right, so the first thing I like to pre-crease besides um, the grid, and I would probably do these first, um, but when we actually get to the structure, I like to do the outline or the border. So if it's something that doesn't quite look like this, say for this one, I would pre-crease the border on the outside like this. Um, that way it just helps us keep track um, where the inside lines need to go and I don't always um, or I don't really draw the crease pattern anymore so like you can see kind of on this one right um, but you can if that helps you keep track I know sometimes with big grids it can be hard to see normally what I will do however is if I know there's transition units I'll put little dots um, with little with pencil, the small dots to keep track of the different intersection points. And then after all the grid units and whatnot, I can just find the dots and that helps me pre-crease um, quickly. But yeah, whatever you need to do to kind of help yourself keep track, go ahead. <clears throat> and as for these diagonal lines, I like to think about them in terms of their grid uh, unit. So if you're used to like XY coordinates from math, you know, this is kind of the same. So say from this point, it would be two down, one across. So one, two, and then one across. And then another one down two, one across. And then for this section, this would be down one across three. And same thing, down one across three. Um, so that's how I would think about these. This is the same as this, you know, cross one up two, cross one up two, and then up one across three, up one across three. And that helps me keep track when I actually go to pre-crease 
So pretend the lines weren't there. What I would do is, um, if I had drawn the point, this would be pretty easy. But I would know that this is, you know, um, across one down two, and I'd just be able to crease like this up to the point. And since I know there's another one, it's pretty easy. I can just keep creasing like this. Again, I'm pre-creasing everything mountain. Same thing here. I know it's down one across three. So same deal. I kind of find a point right here and the point from the down one across three right here. And that just helps me crease that. Similarly, it keeps going like that. So it's pretty simple. Um, I'll just do the other side. Uh, depending on, you know, you can use whatever technique you want to pre-crease. I showed the uh, different ones in the first class that I like to use. So whichever ones you like to prefer, feel free to go for that. But yeah, based on the points, that's how you pre-crease. Um, uh, these. So they're, they're not really like off grid. They're just, um, stretched, I guess, you know, they're not one to one, like a 45 degree angle would be a one to one. Um, these are a little bit different. All right. Now that we have, um, these pre-creased, now we need to pre-crease inside lines. Sometimes you can do this with sync folding in a sequence, but when the structure is kind of weird or I'm folding the crease pattern for the first time, um, I just like to pre-crease it the same way with the two points just because, you know, I, I don't know exactly how it's going to clap. So to be safe, just pre-crease everything. So for these, um, normally I would have like two dots here, or you can kind of just see that, hey, these are the intersection points. Um, and you can just mount and fold it like this. It's nothing too, you know, crazy, like or hard or anything. I don't think it's any difficult. They're just a little bit scary at times because it's different. Um, but when you kind of look at it as just a regular crease, it's really nothing special. Um, all right. And then same thing on the other side and the middle one should be really easy. Um, if you have say, Right, this, it's literally from point to point, so nothing special there. I know you can see it's a valley fold, but, uh, you know, creasing everything mountains, it's not that hard to reverse creases. All right, like this. Awesome. So now that we have everything pre-creased besides these, which I'll do off camera, um, let's get into the collapse. Okay, now where do we start for collapsing these? Now, there's a couple different ways. Um, this specific one, you can kind of do a sequence where you sync fold. However, um, if you get some other strange looking one, again, I'm using an example like this just because it's very, you know, different. Um, you could, uh, you just want to kind of follow the creases. So this side, I'll just show following the creases. Um, you can kind of see that at least this side follows the grid. So if you were to just treat this like an alive stretch, you know, you have this whole section as mountain, you use the grid line on these sides um, to collapse, right? And then you got the other mountain over here. And the only difference is that since we're thinking of it as this triangle, this pre-crease line will be the other edge um, instead of like another grid line or a diagonal um, 45 degree, right? And then it just kind of collapses in. And you can start to see here, it really does look like a sink fold. Nothing too difficult here, um, right? And then just like this. And I just realized this crease pattern is wrong. This should be valley and mountain. Um, I'll have to go fix that before posting this crease pattern. Uh, so hopefully yours will show the correct sides. Uh, but yeah, so nothing too difficult. Now for this specific kind of Pythagorean stretch, uh, you could also think of it just as something like this, right? Where if I just go along our 
outside our border you can kind of see it makes you know it's not this is not a um what would it be like a bird frog base something like that but pretty generic and then from here you can see that we just sink fold this in and it's very similar to just exactly what we what we did um but yeah so nothing too ridiculous you know this is this is pretty easy to do uh, pretty easy to solve um, now obviously they get different so um, I'm gonna bring in this crease pattern which also post this is gonna be another example for you guys to do this is actually a smaller version of what we just did so basically it's only one unit of each side right versus this is like so down one across or down two across one once and then down one across three once versus this was twice for those um, and then similarly this could go on and on and on and make these really big uh, structures um, this is like again this is how many grid units is this one you know this is pretty large um, but yeah nothing too crazy um, with these ones but this will just give you some more practice with pre-creasing um, not on the edge like these so go ahead try this out it looks like this um, pretty simple I mean this could be like you know a way you do dragon horns or a dragon head um, but yeah so designers generally use this because you can have points in different locations that aren't just 45 it can increase efficiency in a box plate design um, but yeah that's that's kind of what this is for um, so go try this out uh, try to understand it and also look for crease patterns that have these structures obviously you don't have to try solving them yet but go ahead do that same drill um, that we've been doing a lot where you find these structures and kind of identify them. If you want to fold like just the grid for these and try collapsing them yourself, that's a really good exercise. I highly recommend doing that. Um, but yeah, this really isn't too hard of a topic or a move, but it's just good to understand and not overthink. But yeah, that's all we have for today. Um, the next video, which either will be posted at the same time of, as this or a little bit after, will be the exercises video um, for all of class two in general. So go ahead, check that out or check it out when it comes out. Um, but good job making it through all these different structures. If you have more questions about these, because they can be a little scary, feel free to drop a comment or message me on Instagram if you need. Um, help so that you can send me a picture or something but yeah thanks for watching and stay tuned for more classes in the future see ya all this origami all this origami all this origami got me going kamikaze now i'm